Okay, we're going to tie a pattern called the Henry's Lake Caddis. Only I tie it in a little smaller version than the original, and I call it the Henry's Pond Caddis. I tie it in a size 12. It was originally a size 8. When you get your thread tied onto the hook, you want to leave a long tag out and put it in your material clip, and then grab your dubbing and dub a uh, tapered body for the underbody of this fly. I've got my dubbing in my right hand and I'm doing the dubbing, actual dubbing with my left hand. That way when I get up here to the uh, mid part of the body and I want to add some extra dubbing, I don't have to set the dubbing down, pick it up, set it down, pick it up. I just uh, have the dubbing right there in my right hand. I can grab some extra dubbing with my left and add it to the dubbing I've already dubbed. Now I'm going to show you how I uh, uh, get the hackle for this. These are uh, mallard feathers dyed to look like wood duck and I want a length of hackle to, to be one and a half times the length of the shank. So I've got those calipers set to one and a half times the length and here's the length of the shank for the Hungarian partridge that's going to be the collar. I'll take this uh, mallard feather and strip the fibers off the bottom and then stroke these mid fibers back and prepare the tip and bring my bobbin up here and spin it so the thread goes back uh, against the uh, stem and grabs it. Get this in my hackle pliers and make a few wraps folding this hackle towards the rear as I wrap. And I've got that pretty well back. I'm not really concerned if they aren't all towards the rear yet. I'm going to tie this off by going underneath and then over the top of it. Trim that stem off. Separate these fibers a little bit with a dubbing tool. And now I'm going to just fold these fibers to the rear and then gather them up. Tie them down here in the front, hang that thread out in the bobbin. And here's where that tag end comes into play. Put this in my hackle pliers so there's some weight to the uh, thread and it stays where I want it to. And I get these fibers gathered, blouse that uh, fiber bunch a little bit, and then pass the thread over. Make sure that it is uh, fairly even all the way around, and it is, so I'll pass that thread over and use the hackle pliers as a weight to move it around until I take them off and tie these half hitches. And the original pattern they call for uh, uh, tying the thread off at the head and then uh, tying a whip finish knot back here but I tie these half hitches and cement it like that and it seems to work for me. Now here's the Hungarian partridge that I had uh, measured out earlier going to prepare it the same way, take the fluff off the bottom, stroke the fibers back, prepare the tip, bring the thread up here, spin my bobbin so that it uh, uh, pushes the thread back towards my material when I tie the stem down. I'll wrap this material and fold it at the same time. Unwrap back to this, then go under the stem, up over, Flip that off. When we've pretty well finished this fly, we have to dub a head on this. And uh, like I said, I'm tying this in a size 12. I use this coloration in a size 12 to imitate a caddis that's very common in the ponds in Maine. And uh, it's uh, pretty effective in the uh, latter part of the summer going towards fall. So I dub this head. Gather that material up, tie this off and whip finish it. Pick that out a little bit. And there you have it. There's a Henry's Lake caddis tied using rotary fly tying techniques.